I thought that we had something special I thought I handled this so well I know we had the right intentions But somehow it came to an end Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing great, you're holding it together, you're being fabulous. So today we're going to be making three types of ruched tops. And the fun part is there is no sewing whatsoever. Even if you have two left feet for hands, I promise you, you can do this. And if I can do it, you can do it, okay? So all you're going to need for the first ruched top is a small t-shirt. I use a small, you can use whatever size fits you right. And the first step is to mark the point you want your crop top to reach. So if you want a long Longer, if you want to shorter it's your world baby girl so you do you and I'm just going to mark the length of my top on both sides someone told me this would make it easier to draw a straight line and it did not so I guess I just have a problem <laughs> and once I drew my straight line across the points I just cut off the excess bit of fabric and now we're going to work on the top bit do not throw away the bottom bit do not sell it to your people you need to keep it for later okay so I turned the top inside out and now I'm just going to hem the bottom this this is totally optional, but in case you want to be a cool kid, in case you want to be in the breakfast club, you have to hem the bottom of your shirt, okay? I just watched that movie and oh my god, it's a classic! I love it! Anyway, I'm just hemming the top. Wow! Yeah, technically I am. I'm hemming the bottom of the top. And all I'm doing is I'm putting some fabric glue along the bottom edge. And once she's in there and settled in, I'm just laying that fabric piece down and patting her into place, making sure she's not talking back to me or disrespecting me. So the points of the seams or rather bulky points needed some extra help drying. So I made sure to put a pair of scissors on top just to put pressure on those points. And once they dried, you have a nice, beautifully hemmed top. So now we're going to to make the points where our casings will go so I'm marking five inches from the side seam and when I got to the top I curved the line out a bit just to give her a bit of curves and thickness so I did this on both sides I'm marking five inches from the side seam and I did this all the way down this is just going to be a guideline for where you'll place your casing and at the top make sure everything is nice and even and curve her out a bit to make her thick with a triple C and K so once I was done I had two lines and they're going to be my guidelines and now it's time to make the casings so all I'm doing is I'm marking out two centimeters from this strip of fabric that was left after we cropped our t-shirt and I made sure to draw a line through the several points I drew a straight line somewhat straight line I'm not good at straight lines and I've given up on them at this point honestly so I just joined the points together to make a somewhat decent strip and once that was done I cut her out and I had a beautiful two centimeter wide strip once I had the strip, look at that beauty, she's gorgeous. I separated the side seams. It was time for her to leave the relationship and move on to being the next best casing in her life. So once I had two pieces, I cut out one more two centimeter strip and divided it into two. And in total, I got four pieces that were going to be my casings. So moving on to attaching them to my t-shirt, I just glued the edge of the casing down and I'm going to put her in a place and I'm just using the line we drew as a guideline. So I'm just applying glue on one edge of my casing and then putting her in place, putting her down, making sure she settles down and understands that this is for life. So this is just a cumbersome process. It's so easy to do, but it really does take time and you're going to get fabric glue on everything. Fabric glue will be in your nose, it will be in your shower it will be everywhere girls so just be prepared for a lot of fabric glue i'm still finding fabric glue on my body 10 days after this diy i made sure to snip off the excess because she was fired her job was not good and i let her go so i'm now gluing down the other edge of the casing and as you can see i went ham with that fabric glue and now all i'm doing is i'm pushing down that edge with the fabric glue just to make sure she's in there she's in the relationship she's present in the moment and she's She's enjoying life so just push her down do whatever you need to do and once you're satisfied with her you're going to repeat the same process on the other side so all I'm doing is I'm putting down some glue and then gluing down the edge of the strip of fabric so this is one edge and I basically pushed her down pushed her in place just make sure you pat her a bit just to make sure she really gets into the zone and now all I'm doing is I'm applying fabric glue all along the other strip all the way to the bottom and I'm just going to 
to lay the edge of this strip all along the fabric glue just to make sure she's in her place. So I made sure to pat her down, make sure she feels calm and happy, and then snip off the excess because you do not need her. She is toxic. She's out of your life. So I also repeated the same thing, gluing down the other edge and pushing it down just to make sure it sticks in place. And you're going to repeat this all the way down to the bottom. So take your time. You will get to know this fabric glue in more intimate ways than you know your boyfriend. Like this process is so involving and so beautiful. You'll come out a new woman or man. <laughs> Once you've glued the casings on one side, you're going to repeat on the other side and then you're going to leave it to dry for two hours and as it's drying, you're going to make your string. So on the remaining bit of t-shirt, I cut out three centimeter wide strips and this was ideal for my strings. You can make it wider or thinner. It's all up to you. It's a DIY, so feel free to customize it to your taste. And once I had my three strips of fabric, it was time to divorce them. It was time to separate them. They were no longer working out the relationship was now toxic. So I just separated each piece into two pieces and eventually I'm going to end up with six pieces. Yes, math is my strong suit. How did you know? <laughs> so once I had my six pieces, each three pieces are going to form one tie, okay? So three pieces will join and they will be in a marriage that has three people. We're open-minded here, okay? So I'm just making sure to glue down the edges together. So we're forming one long string and I glued them on the right sides together. And once they've dried for a bit, as you can see, we have a very long strip of fabric. And they're joined together in holy matrimony and you're going to do this with the other three pieces and fabric glue is really secure. So now we're going to work on one piece and we're basically going to make our tie bit. So to do this, I'm gluing down on the right edge of the fabric. So we are going to turn this the right way out. So along the right edge of the fabric, as you can see, I'm putting down some fabric glue, making sure she's in the moment, she's happy with where she is right now, and I'm just making sure to join the two sides together. And basically the right side will be closed off for a while as everything is drying, and then we're going to use a loop turner to turn her the right way out. So this process was very time consuming. My string was very long and I had to do this twice. So this is a time to just take out your wine, have fun and just relax because I promise you, you will be here until you're 90 years old. So I just made sure to glue down the edge and I'm pushing her down, joining the other side together. And once I got to the edge, I had one strip of fabric and this was going to be my tie. So I repeated this on the second strip of fabric and you're going to have two pieces, let them dry for a while, and once that's done, you will have two pieces that are going to be your strings. So now it's time to use your handy dandy loop turner. If you don't have a loop turner, I think you can use a hairpin, but loop turners are so cheap, I definitely recommend you get them because they make work so much easier. After you get a loop turner, nothing else in your life will ever go wrong again, I promise you. So with a loop turner, you just feed the fabric through it, turn it the right way out by pulling the fabric within itself and since this string was very long I was here for a hot second my first grandchild was born as I was turning these straps the right way out so it did take a long time but it was so worth it because these strings were beautiful they were so gorgeous and I would do it again in a heartbeat why did this get so intense I am so sorry so turn the string the right way out and as you can see she looks pretty this is better than the previous one so we are going to repeat on the second string strip and just like magic we have two strings that we're now going to feed through our casings. So to feed the strings we're going to attach a safety pin to one end and we're going to push her through that casing making sure she understands that this is where she's going to be for the rest of her life. Yes it's a big commitment but she's ready for it. We've prepared her for it. So I'm just pushing the string through really guiding her with that safety pin and once she emerges on one side of the casing you're going to to just flip her around and you're going to push her around into the other casing. So this is why it's important that your casings are separated because if there were one casing, then you wouldn't have a separation and it wouldn't really be a ruched top. So this is the easiest part, honestly, just feeding the string through until it comes out on both ends. And once she's out, she is ready to party. <laughs> 
So once the safety pin comes out, you're going to take her out. Her job is done, but she will be back. She will be back soon. So once that was done, I made sure to really shush out the shirt. I wanted to see everyone. And now you're going to repeat the same threading process on the other side. And then you're going to snip off the ends at an angle just to make them nice and neat. And once that's done, you have your top. Leave her to dry for at least 24 hours before wearing her. And once she's ready for the show, there she is. Is. This is so gorgeous and I think it's such a fun way to revamp a boring t-shirt. I love this shirt so much. I think it's my favorite out of the three. She came through. She's really beautiful and now we're off to make the next two tops. So to make the remaining tops, I used a shirt in size small. This is a men's shirt by the way. The till color you've seen her. She's beautiful. You're now familiar with her. And now it's time to turn this boring eh, shirt into a beautiful top. Actually two. So to start off, I'm I'm going to mark 11 inches from the bottom. This is how long I wanted my top to be. You can make yours longer or shorter if you want it to barely cover you. It's your world, girl. You can wear whatever you want. So I drew a straight line through the points I marked out and I'm just going to cut through that line to separate my t-shirt into two bits. Get rid of the top bit. You don't need it. I'm joking. You do need it. Keep it, girl, okay? So what I'm doing at the bottom bit of the t-shirt is I'm using a spaghetti top as a template and I'm just going to outline that shape just to make sure the final top fits me like a glove and she's in her place hugging me in all the right places and being beautiful so I just cut off the excess bit of fabric I used that bit of fabric as a template on the other side that way my top would be nice and even and no one would know I made this alone in the basement that is basically my goal with all my videos so now you're just going to glue down that edge to join the pieces together you're actually going to do this on both sides and the right sides are kissing so you're gluing down the right sides and the wrong sides outside I hope it makes sense you're going to turn this the right way out once everything is nice and dry so I really made sure to push down that fabric just making sure she was committing to this new relationship and you're going to repeat the same process on the other side and once both sides are done it's now time to hem the top so the process is similar to the previous t-shirt you're just going to apply fabric glue along the edge and push the fabric bit down just to create a beautiful hem and what this does it gives your top a very nice and neat look it's definitely optional because stretchy fabric does not fray but doing this extra step just makes it more profesh and it looks so much better so I highly recommend you do it you don't have anything else to do anyway you're in quarantine so you might as well take the time and make this the best top you could ever make so I just did this all around the top edge made sure to really think about my life and why I am the way I am as I was doing this I came out of this tutorial a new woman I had so much time to think anyway once the top was done you're going to leave it for two hours let her do her and have her me time and in the meantime we're going to make the casing bits so I cut out two centimeter strips of fabric just like in the previous one they will form my casing bits and once I had my two pieces I made sure to separate them along the seam I also got rid of that bulky side seam because I did not need that level of bulkiness in my life. It was toxic and she had to go. So once I had separated both pieces, I had four pieces and they're going to be my beautiful casings. All I'm doing now is I'm marking eight and a half centimeters from the side seams. And I did this on both sides. And this is basically going to be the guideline on where your casings will go. So I did this all the way to the bottom. And once I was done, I took my fabric glue. And all I'm doing is I'm applying her along those points. This is going to make a attaching our casings very easy so make sure you do this and as you can see I just took one strip and I'm laying down the edge on the fabric glue patting her in place holding her there for a while making sure she understands that she needs to not talk back at people okay so I cut off the excess bit of fabric and I also glued down the remaining edge of my casing so you're going to get to know fabric glue in ways you've never known her before at the end of this you'll be looking at her different because you will spend a lot of time with fabric glue with this tutorial so I just made sure to glue down the remaining edge and then I pushed her down in her place and once I was satisfied with that strip of fabric being laid in the fabric glue wow that sounded weird I just made sure to glue down the other edge and I'm just going to lay the other strip of fabric on top of it 
So make sure your strip of fabric is laying right on top of the fabric glue. Push her down. Make sure she's really getting in there because you don't want this to lift or not dry properly in her place. So make sure you're really patting her down. Cut off the excess bit and you're going to repeat the same process. Glue down the edge and then push down the fabric once you're done. That way she's nice and in her place. So this process is very repetitive, as I said, and it is a bit time consuming, but it's super easy to do. As you can see, it's the same thing, just a lot of thinking involved because you are going to spend a lot of time with your thoughts in this tutorial. So I'm going to repeat this on the second side and once I'd done that I had four pieces of casings and we're going to leave that to dry for an hour in the meantime we're going to make the string that will go through the casing bit and I just cut out three centimeter strips and this are going to be my strings I got two of those and then I separated them along the side seams just to make sure they were not together anymore this was toxic for them and I wanted them to move on so I got four pieces from this and then I got two more pieces from the t-shirt from the earlier top so three pieces are going to form one string so this was going to be a very long string so to make the first string I just put some glue on the right side and then lay the right sides kissing that way when they dried I could flip them over and the right side would be glued together in place so leave that to dry for an hour and once that's dry you're going to have a string make sure you repeat to the other three that way you have two strings so to make the string beautiful I'm just going to repeat the same process from earlier and I'm just gluing down one edge the strap is facing the right way up so you're going to flip this the right way out so make sure you're gluing on the right side and as you can see I'm gluing along one edge and really pushing those fabric bits together making sure they like each other and whether or not they like each other they're going to stay together okay so once I had my long strip of fabric this is going to be one string and you need to repeat the process with the second string that way you have two strings strings so you will be here for a while your first child might be born as you're doing this so taking my loop turner I turned them the right way out as I did with the first pair of strings and once I had my strings it was time to move on to the next bit so now for this top I wanted it to have straps you can leave it as a tube top but I wanted that extra security because I'm just a very emotional person and I just need more in life so taking the two centimeter strip I cut that out from the remaining t-shirt separated the side seams that way I could get two strips of fabric and this are basically going to be my straps and to make them I'm going to make them the same way I made the strings I'm gluing this on the right side so the right side is inside you are going to turn this with a loop turner as well so just glue down the edge of the fabric and then join the two sides together that way they can dry together and live a long happy life together so I made sure to really push in that fabric fabric glue was getting all over my hands and you're going to repeat this with the second strap and you will have two straps leave them to dry for a few hours and once that's done you're going to take your loop turner who has been there for you through your most trying times and you're going to use her to turn this the right way out so as you can see I just fed the loop turner through and I'm turning the strap the right way out by turning it within itself this literally took no time at all and just pull on her tug on her make sure she understands that this is life and she's being tested to come out as a diamond and once everything was turned the right way out I had two beautiful straps and I made sure to shorten them because they're a bit long and my shoulders are not that long so I needed to trim them down a bit so I made sure to measure around my shoulders and cut off the excess bit of fabric and once that was done I had two straps and now we're going to attach them to our top so I made sure to attach this nine centimeters from the edge for some reason I thought that's where I'd applied my casings but I Ideally, you want to put them at the same points you marked from the side seams from earlier. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm doing here is I'm applying a smidge of glue and putting down that strap, really pushing her down, making sure she stays in place. So the straps can move about if you don't glue them properly. So I advise you take your time with this. And then you're going to flip the top over and repeat the same thing along the front bit. So just apply a smidge of glue, not too much. You don't want too much. Too much of everything is poor 
poisonous. So once you have enough glue, just glue down the other side of the strap. And once everything is nice and dry, you'll have attached your straps. How simple is that? Honestly, a baby could do this. So once everything is nice and dry, I let this dry for like two hours. And now I'm just going to feed my string through my casing. So same process as before. I put a safety pin on one end and pushed her through the casing, made sure she came out the other side a new woman and she was ready for what was to come. Why does that sound so weird? Anyway, I just pushed her through the casing on both sides. And as you can see, this is so simple to do. Honestly, this is mindless. You could just do this as you think about your crush from the fifth grade who called you out for being weird and you've never forgotten that, okay? This is the kind of thing that will let you think about your life, as I said. So once I'd fed my string through, I made sure to even her out. I really pulled her. And now you're going to repeat the same process on the second side. And once that's done, you're going to snip off the ends obviously to make your strings nice and neat and once that's done you have your beautiful top make sure you turn it the right way out when wearing because that's how normal people wear clothes and once you are done with everything you have your beautiful strappy ruched top honestly how fabulous is this this is such a simple way to elevate a spaghetti top that would otherwise be so boring you wouldn't notice them at a party but now with a ruching you see her girl you see each other okay so now it's time to make the final top and I saved the easiest for last and to do this I'm just using a one shoulder top I've had for years as a template and I just lay her flat in the fabric made sure she was getting along with everyone and then I outlined the shape and I made sure to really maximize my fabric that's because I wanted this top to fit me so I'm just using the top as a guideline but I eventually had to finesse this because I wanted this to fit over everything so I made sure to avoid the side seams so I'm just drawing out a line that accommodates everyone but is also not intruding on the side seams because you don't want bulky side seams in your top. So I really Picassoed this. Honestly, Picasso who? I was here being an artist, okay? I really made sure to draw out that shape and once I was satisfied with it, I cut it out and I had the template for my one shoulder top. I basically had a one shoulder top after this step. So I'm just following the lines cutting her out getting rid of all the toxicity we don't need it in 2020 2020 is already trying enough okay we don't need more problems so once everything was nice and cut out I'm now going to glue down the sides together and the right sides are kissing so the wrong side is facing out and you're just gluing on the right side so that when everything is nice and dry, you flip this the right way out and you'll have a beautiful top. So I really glued down those edges and I repeated this on both sides because obviously you have your 3D object, okay? You need things to go around you unless you're 2D and in that case, you should be in a museum not doing a DIY because you are a unique being. Is there a 2D human? Oh my God, I'm getting distracted. Anyway, now you're just going to leave both sides to dry for an hour so that everything is nice and dry and you're going to hem all the cut edges. I did this the same way I did for the other tops and I left it to dry for an hour. So now remember the side bits we got from the strappy top. I just drew out a two centimeter wide strip made it as long as I could we're maximizing this t-shirt let me tell you I threw out maybe an inch of fabric I really made sure to use it to its maximum potential she would be proud so I got two pieces of fabric and they're going to be our casing bits so taking my one shoulder top she's been drying for a hot minute so she's gotten into the groove of things she's ready for the next chapter so all I'm doing is I'm applying fabric glue along the side seam and the side seam is just going to act as a divider for both our casings so I just used it as a guideline and I just lay down one edge of my casing along the fabric glue really made sure to pat her down put her in her place I then turned the top around to cut off the excess bit of fabric this just made it easier for me to cut you don't have to turn your top around and now I'm going to repeat the same process and apply fabric glue to the remaining edge and I'm going to glue her down making sure she's in 
in her place. I'm the boss and this strip of fabric needs to respect that. So I made sure to really put her in her place. She's not out here talking to the police about my business. I don't need it to the police. And then I just applied fabric glue along the other side of the side seam and then I laid down my casing. So it's the same process. You're just putting everyone in their place. You're making sure they understand that you deserve the respect, okay? And then I cut off the excess bit of fabric, obviously. We didn't need her anymore. And then I glued down the remaining edge just to make sure our casings would be nice and in place. So I was really turning this top around, making sure I could get all the angles, girl. And all I'm doing is I'm applying fabric glue along the remaining edge and then pushing her down, making sure she's sticking down. And I did this all the way to the bottom. Once I was happy with the casing bits, I'm going to leave them to dry for two hours just to make sure they sit right. And then I used my sleeve bits to get the string bits. So I cut out three pieces from each sleeve. I'm just showing you the outline and then I cut them out. And in total, I had six pieces. My math is still good, girl. <laughs> so this six pieces are going to form one long string. You only need one string for this ruched top. So all I'm doing is I'm joining the edges along the right sides and I'm going to leave them to dry for an hour. And after they're nice and dry, we're going to make our string the same way we made the previous strings. Nothing has changed. The recipe is still the same. We're going to apply glue along the edge and the right edge is inside. We're enclosing the right edge because we're going to use a loop turner to turn this the right way out. So I did this all along the edge and once I had a very long strip of fabric, I'm going to leave her to dry for an hour or two or five. It doesn't matter. And then I used my loop turner to turn her the right way out and now it's time to feed her through my casing so same process i used a safety pin to guide the string through she needed to be guided through the casing and the safety pin did that for her the safety pin was a source of comfort in a very dark time we all need that in this quarantine time honestly so i just guided the string once the safety pin was done i got rid of her and now i'm just going to even out that string just to make sure she's nice and even on both sides and then you're going to snip off the ends just to make sure everything is nice and neat and once that's done you basically have your top so how easy was the last top honestly they're all super easy to do they're just very time consuming and that's what the one shoulder top looks like on i love the ruched detail i think it takes the stop out of the friend zone and she's now boyfriend material she's looking good honey anyway guys that's it for me today thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you'll be trying out this DIYs. Let me know which top was your favorite. Let me know which one you'll be making. I suggest you make all of them because they're all super dope. And when we come out of this quarantine, fashion over who? We're going to be coming out of this quarantine in our $5 DIYs where they're going to be looking bomb as hell and we're not contributing to fast fashion. And the fact that there's no sewing in this, girl, you better get that fabric glue and start crafting, girl. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed watching Watching this video and that you'll consider joining me in my next one but until then I'm off to rock this tops as I binge watch shows let me tell you my TV she don't deserve me at this point I'm looking too good <laughs> anyway guys see you next time bye